Hey folks, welcome to another day, another unboxing. And what I've got here is the LG Velvet. Yes, finally got one. I think this is a European device. It's coming to North America, the US at some point. Not quite sure what the pricing is going to be. In Europe, it's around $750, $800. Not a cheap phone, but it is very nice. It is powered by a Snapdragon 765G, so it's a 5G phone. Just not full on flagship in terms of chipset, but that doesn't mean anything. The 765 is a pretty fast chip, as we know. So let's unbox this. You get the box here, not too much. LG at the top, not too much in the back. I think there's some numbers at the bottom. And this is a 128 gig version. So let's get started, shall we? Ta da! Ooh, nothing inside. You've got the phone here, which I'm gonna have to tip to get out and a SIM removal tool fell out. We've got a European charger and it's USB type A on one end. I'll leave this up so we can see the wattage, which I'll put here. And then we have a USB-C to A cable, C on one end, A on the other, nothing too crazy here. Doesn't look like there's anything else in the box. So let's move on to the phone, because that's what we came for. So remember that LG Velvet is supposed to be affordable flagship or maybe like a premium mid-range. That's kind of the idea, but it's um, LG's kind of new design language. So this is a big deal for LG. They're really kind of trying to reinvent themselves and change the design language, which I haven't really changed since the V30 back in the day. So it says sleek and premium, hence the design aspects. Easy creation camera, OLED full vision display, IP68 water and dust resistant. Again, none of this is too surprising. There is some stickers in the back, so let's see if we can pull this out of its uh, entrapment. Oh, it just turned on while I was pulling this out. So that's convenient. There it is, LG Velvet. You can see, ooh, little LG sounds. You see this says a curved edge display, which is not my favorite thing, but there it is. So this is a 6.8 inch display. It's an AMOLED, of course like all modern LG phones. It's actually technically a plastic OLED, so it has uh, you know curved edges because of that. Nothing too crazy there. It's 1080p, so unfortunately no high refresh rate here. We're not looking at 90 hertz, it's just a 60 hertz panel. But there is a reason for that, and you'll see the reason if you stay tuned to this video. The reason this doesn't have a 60 hertz display is because of, I'll hint at it, the dual screen case. So yeah, so there we go. <laughs> okay, so let's start with that camera on top. You see there's an earpiece. The front camera is a 16 megapixel f over 1.9 with one micron pixels. Not too bad, not too great. There's that beautiful display. A little bit of bezel top and bottom. Not too much on the edges, of course, because of the curved edges, but you can really see the curving here. Again, I kind of wish phones would get over this curved edge stuff. It's getting a little annoying. I'm going to remove the IMA sticker quickly so that we can move on. There we go. And uh, in the back, as you can see, it's very stylish. This is not the fanciest color. It's like a metallic gray or something. But you can see it has multiple camera systems and they're lined up in a nice little uh, teardrop design, which is pretty cool. So let's talk about these cameras real quick, right? There is a 48 megapixel main sensor. It's f over 1.8 with 0.8 micron pixels and of course phase detect autofocus. There's no OIS listed here, but it does quad pixel binning 4 to 1 to get 1.6 micron pixels and 12 megapixels of output, which you know is a pretty standard thing these days. Then there's an 8 megapixel ultra wide f over 2.2 with 1.12 micron pixels. And finally, you have a 5 megapixel depth sensor f over 2.4 unspecified pixel size so that's it you get the lg logo of course now because this is an oled screen you do have an in display fingerprint sensor somewhere around here there is no uh, fingerprint sensor in the back and stuff that's pretty standard fare these days so let's talk about the guts of this thing real quick there is a snapdragon 765g with 5g support as i said you got uh, either 6 gigs or 8 gigs of RAM with 128 gigs of storage. There is micro SDXC expansion, so you can add more if you want. So that's pretty nice. 
and uh, yeah that's it in terms of specs there is of course a battery and it's pretty generous at 4300 milliamp hour the snapdragon 765 g is pretty efficient because the 5g modem is integrated so uh should last quite a while for this uh for this battery and that's it in a nutshell the lg velvet very nice very fancy but we're going to get to the dual screen case in a second I just wanted to give you a quick tour of the edges before we do. So on the right hand side here, you've got the power lock key. Uh, it doesn't have any kind of special markings, but it's the only thing here. On the bottom, you have a speaker. This has stereo speakers. So this is one of the two speakers here. Then there is a USB type C port and a headphone jack. LG keeps putting headphone jacks on their phones, which is great. Now I'm not 100% sure, and I'll put it up on the screen, whether this has the quad dock from LG, which is really high quality. But I'll find out and let you know. On the left hand side, you get the volume rocker here and a Google Assistant button, which has been on a lot of LG phones for the last couple of years. And then on top, you don't really have too much other than the SIM tray. I think there's some plastic coating all this I'll have to remove and the secondary microphone. SIM tray does also micro SDXC support. So that's it for the lay of the land. Now let's have a look at the case here. Yeah, let's see what's in here, shall we? See, that's what it looks like. Serial numbers on the other side here. It's really nothing too much. Ooh, fancy. So, nothing in here. And how to remove the dual screen, how to install the dual screen. It's very typical of all the previous LG phones I've reviewed. I'll put my V60 unboxing up here. But basically, you slide the phone in uh, with the USB Type-C port first, and then you click it in place, and then the reverse is you push it out through this little hole back here to get the camera loose and then you can pull out the USB Type-C connector. So this is what this looks like. Let's uh, take it out of the box and let's remove this sticker. And now you can see this dual screen case. Now some reviewers you've probably noticed have a white one. So there's a white version of this case, which I think looks really good. Here's a little foam insert for the charging adapter. This is a magnetic adapter, very much like MagSafe. Plugs into here, as you can see, it has USB-C on it. The reason they can't put a USB-C port right here is because it's not deep enough. There's not enough thickness to have both the USB-C port going into the phone and this kind of entering here so it's a bit cumbersome that they have this design this has been an ongoing problem with these dual screen cases is that you have to carry this around if you, unless you want to take the phone out of the case and you tend to lose this thing and also the headphone jack opening as you can see here is you know pretty deep so if you have a headphone jack that's a little thick in diameter it won't fit in here you need an adapter so that's a bit of a pain and of course there's a 1080p matching display but not curved edges with also a notch here it doesn't have a camera in that notch it's just you know as you can see here just the notch so that it's identical on both sides so you, as the instruction mentioned you just slide the phone in here like this all right and then you pop it in like this and unfortunately unless you set up the phone this display doesn't turn on but if you do this with the phone all set up the second screen starts up and then you have a you know interesting little OLED front screen with notifications and time it just doesn't have a touch support or anything it doesn't do anything really but this is definitely the thinnest and lightest dual screen case that LG has done yet and uh, you know feels pretty nice now you'll notice that the right side of the phone is exposed you still have the power lock key but the left side has a plastic rim so they've replicated the buttons here the volume rocker and the google assistant button on the left side and then of course at the bottom you get the speaker microphone and then as i said the problematic headphone jack port thing and then on top the hole for the secondary mic so that's kind of the layout and the design of this dual screen case and of the LG Velvet. Yeah, so please like, subscribe, tell your friends, uh, comment below, click the little notification bell below, all that good stuff. Remember, this is a compliment to the podcast at mobiletechpodcast.com. So if you want to know my thoughts about this phone, please listen to the podcast. We're on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Pocket Casts, Spotify, pretty much everywhere, mobiletechpodcast.com, and you should subscribe and tell your friends. And I'll have more videos soon, so until then, stay tuned, everyone. Cheers.